Hey everybody, welcome back to another Rick Warren episode of Coffee with Specs. Today I have award winning editor, filmmaker, uh, I, don't, I have no other adjectives to describe you, former Disneyland employee. Boy, doesn't that bring the rest of the. <laughs> I mean, he won. What else? He what else did I say? What else, did I miss anything? He won a film award one time and had his thing screened in Santa Monica and also won an iPod Nano 12 years ago at a, a mini golf place. <laughs> that, those are the achievements he took. Didn't you win something else? Didn't you win like editor of the year or something in high school? <laughs> what, for for the, uh, the highlight class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. I mean, no, no offense to anyone else in that class, but I think the bar is fairly low. No, you're right. You're right. It's <laughs> it's a it's a dwarf among midget situation. <laughs> oh, I didn't even go that far. Right. You said it, I didn't. Hi there. I'm uh I'm Taylor. Uh, I'm a good friend of Brandon's. Known him since uh, probably uh going on uh, 14 years now. Getting close to 14 years now. Was it 14 years? We met in 2007. And it's 2021. Oh, shoot. Because I was like, wait a minute. We've only been out of high school 10 years, and I totally forgot. It was freshman year. We also knew each other in high school. <laughs> yeah, I know, but you know, I, 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 I didn't do the mental hurdle of, oh, wait, I got to add four years. Right. <laughs> you know, I skipped that part. Definitely at least 13 years. Probably 13 and a half years, for being yeah, totally we, honest. Yeah, we, we, can, we can, I mean, we can round up. We're fine. <laughs> it's all, yeah. It's all good. So today in the coffee shop, I'm drinking a very fine pour over, um, oh man, uh, Don Francisco, uh, cinnamon hazelnut blend. Oh, I, I, I don't have any coffee right it's now. It's coffee with coffee. specs. I'm sorry. I have water. That's all I have. I can go whip up a cup of decaf. From, I think Don Francisco decaf if I really want one. This is like finding out Walt Disney hated Donald Duck. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. When we're in this coffee discussion, the only coffee I I want to try Green Day's coffee. But oh, I have on me. So, like, the daily coffee I drink, I have a um, Major Dixon's blend from Pete's Coffee is, like, my main coffee throughout the day. Okay. But I have I have a hazelnut. I have a hazelnut blend. Yeah. That I got from work that is cheap, but it's it's a good like dip and change of pace. Ooh. And then I have uh I have a decaf that's like Don Francisco or something. There that's you go. Like, that sounds that, good. Yeah. Oh, it, it it's good. I'm yeah. not like hazelnut coffees are really weird to me. Like I have to it's, Oh, they could definitely overdo it. And Don Francisco's other flavors definitely overdo it, but somehow they nailed it with the cinnamon hazelnut. The, the the flake the fake hazelnut flavor just really gives it that. Yeah, there's a there's definitely a way to put too much or too little because I've definitely had like hazelnut where I'm like wait where's that where's that sweet nut I paid for? <laughs> yeah, no, but you know what's weird is like a lot of the hazelnuts like it's like where I get mine it's like hazelnut cream so it's not like, yeah just straight hazelnut but it has like a it's got a hint of nuttiness and the cream in my opinion tends to be uh, a little too strong in order to get the amount of hazelnut i want like yeah. uh then i'm you, then i'm putting way too much sugar and cream into it and i'm like i just wanted like a touch if they had like a hazelnut juice i would definitely <laughs> Okay. As upsetting as that might sound, uh, I would I would definitely purchase a hazelnut juice. Can I can I ask you this one? I know you don't have like a bunch of like space because you because of where you live, right? But I've been thinking, do I do I invest in an espresso machine? Boy, boy, the question that every man must ask himself on the mountaintop. Uh, <laughs> is that is that the next level? Because I work with people who have it, and they say like. It's life changing, and I'm like, hang on a second. I don't know if I can commit myself to that yet. It's definitely the uh, the coffee lover's equivalent to having like a, a vinyl record set up. Uh, <laughs> um, how much coffee are you drinking every day? I don't. So I don't. I try not to overdo it because if I drink too much, I am just like peeing every ten seconds. Oh sure. And I can't really be doing that. You, you know how it goes. But. Um, in terms of like caffeinated drinks, I can. Last Sunday, I had 
two cups of coffee. No, I had uh, 20. So one of those like big mugs of coffee, like you get at Target, like one of those mugs. All right. I had a 30 ounce, I had a 30 ounce size coffee. And then I had uh energy, like one of like my energy, I have energy drinks. So I had, right. I had a 12 ounces of that too. So I had like 50 ounces of caffeine in one day. Okay. That doesn't sound too bad. I mean, it's nothing like when we had those Turbo Coke floats back. Oh my college. god, those were. I, <laughs> I still, I, I still tell people about that. Oh, I told somebody about that. I said, you really want to get yourself wired and just have a cocaine experience. Go to a co- get a shot of espresso, put some coke in it, Coca Cola in it, and then top it off with some ice cream. You'll be wired for days. Yeah. So, so for the listeners' reference, a uh, Turbo Coke float is what was it? A piece? Did we add the fudge, or does it come with fudge? I'm going to, I think it was, I'm going to see if I can find it, but I believe, I believe it's a shot of espresso, Coca-Cola and ice cream. I don't remember it having. And if I remember right, because the particular coffee shop that we patronized that day specialized in pieces of fudge, we also opted to have fudge added. Um, So it's probably, it's probably about a week's worth of uh, recommended amount of sugar for one person, and then about triple the amount of caffeine for a single day one should have. It's literally so. It's literally just Coke with an espresso shot. Imagine a imagine a Coke float with espresso. <laughs> That's it, and it's not like it's bad or anything. It's just like hello. It definitely, uh, if you wanna, if you, it's it's a lot like driving a car straight into a brick wall as fast as you can. I mean, it was an experience. Definitely an experience. That I never want to have ever again. It leaves I, uh, it leaves a taste in your mouth for sure. It's a, something you do uh, once. It'll put air in your chest. Oh, for sure. A lot like uh, a lot like Trader Joe's is cold brew, just straight, just hair right on the chest. Well, I don't think I've ever had the Trader Joe's cold brew. I have to check uh, that out. Let me, oh, let me tell you something. That stuff is concentrated and it is strong. Today I had a, um, what was it, a cinnamon oat milk cold brew coffee from Starbucks. Uh, I heard about Starbucks bringing the cold the oat milk to the menu. And the uh, I have to say, it was pretty good. A lot of their, a lot of Starbucks drinks are a little too sweet for me. Um, a lot of, like, they'll just make me feel sick if I, uh, I'll constantly yeah. have to get talls and grandes from there because I just, it, by the time I finish a venti, it's, just, I feel bloated and gross. But this, uh, this one, I, it, it, oat milk in particular can make you feel a little bloated, especially if you drink a whole cup of it. Uh, but this who one, who drinks that much oat milk? Like I mean, I mean, like as, uh, as part of a coffee drink. Yeah, that's okay. Like, I mean, if you, if you got a venti drink, a with it. yeah, because it's mostly the oat milk at that point. Yeah, because it's going to be, I would guess, well, it's probably not as much as you think, because they put the ice in first, and one of those scoops of ice is usually about 90% of the cup. That's fair enough, but whatever they're doing, I think uh, of oat milk, I mean, that's still, I mean, that's that's still half a cup in, uh, in terms Dude, of uh, measurement. Made, I make I've made these drinks before. Yeah, it's way more. Yeah, I mean I thought it was I good. The barista station. I mean, uh, it, it was good. It was good. If anybody's listening and they're uh, yeah. if they've been if they've been on the edge of their seats, oh, will I? Won't I? For sure, you can take it from me, Taylor, on this one podcast episode that you should give it a shot. <laughs> it's not bad, like. I, I am a fan of oat milk, especially in like lattes. Like, oh yeah, adding that, like adding the nuttiness, just adds a little bit of like depth to it. That like, like um, I don't, I'm not a fan of almond milk. I don't almond milk, not good. I don't care much for. Yeah. Um, soy milk has a weird taste to it, but oat milk because it had it's oat, so it's got a little more of like an earthy, nutty thing. Yeah, just adds that little like it. It levels off the sweetness of like vanilla really, really well. It makes it. It makes coffee taste like breakfast. <laughs> All right. That's how I imagine it. Because I, as I, I, I really enjoy soy milk, but not in coffee. It does not blend well with coffee, uh, and that's coming from somebody who who drinks uh, unsweetened soy milk by itself uh, because I enjoy the flavor. 
Uh, it's not good with coffee. <laughs> it's got a, it, it really blends weird with the flavors. Uh, there's something going on yeah. with the undertones. Oat milk really fills that void for me, at least. Yeah. Almond milk. Almond milk's okay, but I don't think almond milk is anything spectacular. I feel like almond milk is one of those things that if you don't love it, you probably hate it. <laughs> yeah, I think almond milk... The thing with almond milk, at least in terms of coffee, is because they have... They make... You can get a barista like variant of it so right a lot of times it's, you might be able to get like the almond milk variant because they make one especially to be seen right i don't know that's why I, I would assume i would assume now that like because they partnered i think with oatly so i would assume that variant of oat milk now exists that it can be seen i'm s- oat milk's <laughs> mostly water so it probably won't have that same issue that like soy milk or yeah milk have, i would guess Oh man, can we talk about that amazing Oatly Super Bowl commercial? <laughs> that was the worst commercial I have ever seen. That was the worst commercial of any Super Bowl in recent memory. I mean, I'm not even like a big uh I'm not a big Super Bowl guy. I haven't watched all of them. I haven't seen all these commercials. It was bad. It was just bad. Get a professional singer in there to write a professional song. I mean, they have the money. <laughs> Like, were they, like, I mean, I fully understand the whole concept of, like, we don't want a giant cast or crew because of COVID, and I'm sure they filmed that, like, in December or November. Right. But it was like, can you at least get a better, like, keyboard and not one that Gene uses, like, on Bob's that <laughs> can make robot sounds and fart noises? <laughs> Just, uh, come and drink oat milk. Bark, bark. <laughs> Was that all? Yeah, basically, like that's what it felt like. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was. <laughs> I see a lot of those. It's like you paid. It's like you paid. Someone paid you to make that commercial. Also, as somebody who lives in the city of angels, uh, you know their advertising budget is not modest. I see them everywhere: billboards, buses, bunch, be- uh, bus benches. I mean, they're all over the place. It's not like they're. The the whole we're going to be modest with our commercial is completely out of nowhere to me. It's like, but why? That's the one thing they cut the product on, was that one commercial for the Super Bowl that millions of eyes are going to see. And please don't, please don't look at all the crazy amounts of advertising we do everywhere else, please. Right. Inclu- ignore the guy behind the curtain. Including their slightly annoying bus ad that I see. This is a sign you should drink oat milk. It's like... Just tell me, just tell me, just tell me to drink oat milk. Don't do this weird meta, like, I'm a sign and I'm telling you to drink, because it really makes this feel, it makes it feel more like we're getting more and more to the, uh, what is it, like, what's that movie where the guy wears the glasses and it tells him what the signs are really saying, like, obey, and like, oh, you have to go reproduce. What is it, they, they, yeah, it's some movie, I'm going to look it up. Somebody is listening to this and screaming in their car right now. Um, movie where guy has glasses. I bet we'll bring it up. <laughs> they live. They live from 1988. I thought it was a commercial. I mean, I'm sure it, it's a it's a heavily referenced movie, uh, particularly in politics by everybody because everybody's right and everybody sees through the. I see through like all of the. I see through all the BS, dude. You know. <laughs> No, no, yeah. My favorite thing with, with I don't, I don't want them to say political, but my favorite, my my favorite latest. There were two major scandals that happened this week. Oh, if you didn't know, uh, we had Dr. Seuss being canceled and Mr. Potato Head no longer being Mr. Potato Head. Are these political movements? <laughs> yeah, I kid you not, because they're like so. Dr. Seuss's publisher pulled four books um, because they had quote-unquote racial undertones sure okay sure whatever i mean it's not a great look four... no but the funny thing was if you look at the book like i had i finally happened to look and see what books got like banned right you know, hyperbole they were books that i out of the books that that aren't being published anymore i literally read one of them as a kid or had one read to me as a kid they were not they were not the popular ones they... for sure no no, no, no. They, I don't think they were popular because, like I said, I only remember like one of them. And I think it, I think it was like one of those. Um, you remember those like video, like books on video where they like and they took the pictures and like and like did like a, a like a a weird like kind of animated. Like yeah, 
where like it, you it would basically be like after effects where they like if it was like the guys running like they pull them across the screen right like they're running yeah i've yeah, definitely like seen those. those i think that was in one of those it was like one of those things and yeah I think I saw it on Mulberry Street, was it? And that was the only one I remember, and I remember literally nothing about this. Book. Right. You could tell me anything happens in this book, and I'll believe you. I would say, I'm just like, unless some, unless somebody had, like, all these people are like, they canceled Dr. Seuss. It's like, all right, show me your copy of Mulberry Street that you have in your house right now, and maybe you'll have a point. But no one cares about these books at the end of the day. No, that was my whole thing. I'm like, I'm like, I, it, I'm like it's weird. And mind you, like, it's one of those weird things where I think it's a lot of, like, where do you hear it from? Like, if you yeah. hear it on Fox News, you're going to get, you'll get, like, the whole, like, we need to stop it. You'll hear it on CNN, and it's sort of like, I don't know, like, the opposite of that reaction. I don't know what the opposite of that reaction is. They, uh, the... <laughs> What what's happening is they said here's some underperforming books that have weird racial undertones anyway, so we're not we'll just we're yeah. just gonna stop producing more of them. That's what they did, and that, then yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, got yeah. twisted yeah. into the left is killing Dr. Seuss. He's gonna come into your house and they're going to find all the copies. They're gonna put a sign in your front yard that says I'm a racist and I love racism. <laughs> and, yeah, and it was like I hear it from a moderate guy. And he put up one of the pictures of it, which was like a, a guy, a, an Asian guy eating rice or something. He's like, I don't find it offensive, but all right, whatever. Like, that was the first controversy, that hilarity, to where you get Kevin McCarthy reading a, reading Hop on Pop on a live stream. First off, Hop on Pop has probably done uh, loads of damage to fathers all over the world, and I don't think we're talking about that. <laughs> yeah, we're not, yeah, poor Pop. But Mr. Potato Head is being uh, degendered because, you know, potatoes. <laughs> Look, it, you know, this goes along with what I think is there needs to be an alternative to Mr. Potato Head that includes the junk. That's exactly <laughs> right. I think that's the problem. Is there's not a hefty, a hefty undercarriage on him, so we don't know. Because here was my thought. Is I like if you had like a Mister and Mrs. Potato Head similar to like um like Toy Story, like what if you grabbed the wrong potato at one point? Yeah, that's what, that's the double edged sword that these uh, <laughs> these anti cancel culture people aren't considering is what happens when you put a mustache on Mrs. Potato Head. No, no, like my whole thing is I'm like it's a potato. If they want to be like toy potato head underneath Mister, that's fine. I think that's the smart play. Because no one's gonna. It, it's it's just, yep, it, it's a potato. I mean, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's reactionaries that are using this as a means to sell more Harry subscriptions. I mean, that's just the name of the game right now. <laughs> why? Why is Harry getting slighted? Because every time I see one of these, every time I see one of these uh, reactionaries talking about something that happened in the news, it's always like before they start. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Oh man, do you have uh, balls, Harry balls? You got to get your balls cleaned. <laughs> oh, Doctor Squatch is bringing you this one. <laughs> Doctor Squatch and Raid Shadow Legends. Yeah, Raid Shadow Legends. Um, freaking, uh, who is that guy? The Hero My Garage guy from like five years ago is probably going to come uh, back anytime uh, now. What are you talking about? Oh yeah, Ty Ty Lopez. Yeah, that's him. The guy who got rich by selling friend. books on how to get rich. I had a friend meet him. I really? My buddy Austin. Yeah, my buddy Austin met him, and I actually I sent him a text saying, "Ask him about the books in his garage. Ask him about the books in his garage." <laughs> Oh man, I wonder he has a copy of uh, I saw it on Mulberry Street in that <laughs> in his garage. I guarantee he hasn't read any of those books. He's probably read Mulberry Street. <laughs> it's a, it's a yeah, second, grade <laughs> second grade level. That's why he's investing so much on Mulberry Street right now. Ah, there you go. He also put uh, heavy investments in uh, green food dye. There you go. Did you ever watch it? So back to the back to the original discussion of the Super Bowl commercials. Yes. Did you see the doc? You know, Doctor Squatch got a video, got a full fledged commercial from Super Bowl this year, right? God, those Doctor Squatch commercials follow me everywhere, and I wish they would leave me alone. They're hilarious. You know what's funny is I'm willing to try the soap, but like I don't want like I don't need to see your ads every thirty. Seconds. What it feels like is that somebody went out and they made soap. Cool. I'm glad you made soap to sell. But then they were like. 
well, how do we get the people who watch Rick and Morty to buy this soap? It really feels like that's the exact audience that they're looking to like sell to. I mean, here's the whole thing. I totally get what they're going for. Right. Like, one of the, like, the, one of the oddities, and I remember I've had these conversations, is like when it comes to dudes, and you know, you're a dude, I, I think. I am. Um, <laughs> okay. Like, one of the things with, like, especially like us, us guys, is we're not the swiftest when it comes to like skincare a lot of times. Oh, yeah. Like, we'll use the same crappy bar soap till, you know, on our faces and our butts, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely the, uh, I think I probably spend under $100 on my uh, personal grooming products in the shower uh, per year. Uh, so we're we're so talking shampoo, so conditioner, and Dove soap. Yeah, so as much as we make fun of them for being like, all they want to do is get the neck beer who watches Rick and Morty. That neck beer who watches Rick and Morty, I guarantee you, is spending $20 a month on on his stuff, and it's basically one bottle that literally goes head to toe. I mean, all they have to do to sell their entire stock is add a little Rick face to all their bars of soap and a little note that says, I'm a bar of soap, Morty. And then, you know, they'll, they'll sell that out. I saw the I saw the line going around the McDonald's on La Brea when the Szechuan sauce dropped. <laughs> exactly. There's a fan base for this exactly. stuff. It's the worst fan base in the world, but they're out there and they have money they want to give me. <laughs> there you go. I mean, so in terms of that, like, I fully understand the notion of like, hey, should guys spend a little bit more than five dollars on soap? Probably. <laughs> I think what it offends me about it is that they that the YouTube algorithm has targeted me as one of these gentlemen, and I really am not. <laughs> pay for the, the pay the eleven dollars for premium. I did it, and it's life changing. I'm really close to just buying YouTube premium. I cannot take any more of these advertisements. Uh, and then what sucks is you go down this one weird rabbit hole. This week on Instagram, I clicked on a hat because I thought, that's a nice looking hat. I'm interested in learning more about the hat. And now Instagram is like, oh, this guy loves hats. His whole life is hats. He can't get enough hats. We're going to send him so many hats. You see, if they did that for me, I wouldn't mind it. I, I, I have an extensive hat collection. So... I wouldn't mind that too much, but I only like snapbacks, not those super fitted ones. So, uh... I mean, Instagram, I mean, they did get me enough where I actually went to the store in Los Angeles to look for one of the hats, and uh, it was sold out. So, so well, advertising. So, well, I am going, well, it's a large, uh, it's a large company. I'm going to have to. Well, they, way to go. well, either way, I blame Zuckerberg. The Zucks definitely had something to do with it, unfortunately. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's an asshole. We all know it. But he when he's... Drink <laughs> He doesn't know how to drink water and he doesn't know how to work his own advertising. But when you know, when uh when I'm uh when when I'm forced to vote uh President Zuckerberg in for his seventh term in twenty five years, I'll be happy to know that he helped me get a hat once. Right. <laughs> Thanks for the hat. You know what? A lot of people don't like this guy, but and then like I turn around and the guy in the distance gives me like the thumbs up and I say, He got me a hat once. Ah, yeah, there you go. Isn't it crazy? Cool. That guy started making an app where you could just rate women, and it came all the way up to people storming the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> what a fact! I, I like I like to draw a straight line between those points with no nuance in the middle. <laughs> That's more fun. It's more fun that way. It's fun to think of it. <laughs> I like to imagine. Oh man, what if Zuckerberg is Q? <laughs> what a twist that would be! It could be anybody. <laughs> It's probably not anybody. I'm pretty sure very... a lot of people know who it is, but... It's probably some guy on 4chan. 8chan. Oh, that's right. The uh, the person I who... I forgot the Seth Underbelly move. The the people who are so rancid that 4chan kicked them out. That, that's that gotta be something, right? That's so awful that 4chan said, get out. These are the kinds of people that get pan uh, banned from Parlor. Like, that's impressive. <laughs> you know... That's, an award. That's, that's an achievement that needs to be unlocked. Like, you get banned from the sites that don't that, that don't censor free speech, but you cross some line. You can do whatever except for one of these three inhumane things, and then you still get banned. It's a real... <laughs> you know, that's a t-shirt that's somewhere. A real, that's a real... Tra that's a real hard thing to do. To the oh. point where they say we're legally liable for you putting this stuff here so we can no longer support uh, hosting oh. this content for you. No, no, so, so speaking of that, um, 
I want to bring this up. If you, <laughs> I don't want you to look this up at the same time. I want you to look it up, but I don't want to say it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to send you a picture of three videos that are on YouTube. All right. And I want you to put, and I want. Oh, okay. Hold on. That's it. Okay. Hold on. Please hold. I'm gonna just continue. But so these videos, when I'm about to. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, like, it, I, I went to do something and I switched back. Just promise uh, me that you're going to put uh, elevator uh, elevator music here while we're... Uh... <laughs> oh, while I'm filibustering? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can. Perhaps somebody yeah. reading lovingly from I saw it on Mulberry Street. Oh, there you... Oh, I should, I should find that. Okay, I found it. I bet there's a so, video of Katy Perry reading that somewhere. Oh my god, yes. I want that more than anything. Okay, I'm sending it to you. Sorry. Alright, now. The, so this picture is three videos, and these videos are up on YouTube. And let me tell you something, it's the only time YouTube's ever responded to. Oh, these are perfectly fine. They didn't violate any guidelines. Huh. Okay. And let me tell you. And, and let me tell you. I... I watched one of them so i'm like there's no way this is real right is it there's legit no way for the uh for the listener the uh i'll read i'll go ahead and lovingly read, read the the, the titles read the title because it, it, if it doesn't it's <laughs> i don't know what this and is i would this say i would say i hope that this doesn't uh interfere with you getting ads at any point but looking at the view count uh it clearly didn't affect it's these guys so i think you're fine it's fine it's youtube literally said this is fine um, video number one features, uh, in the thumbnail, uh, two large muscular men, both clad in, uh, Santa Claus hats, uh, both of them, uh, down to their underwear. They're in a reasonably sized, it looks like, uh, you know, I want to say apartment, but if I'm being honest, it does look like a mobile home, uh, just from the length and the kind of the way that it's skinny down. Uh, one man is on the ground. The other one is holding a large candy cane that disappears behind his back. Uh, the name of the video is, of course, Real What's Up My Butt Challenge Holiday Edition with, and I'm not going to say the guy's name because he doesn't deserve that. Or does he? Um, all right. Cade Maddox. Uh, <laughs> uh, video number two features two men behind one guy in the front. The guy in the front uh, on his stomach is kind of looking at the camera like, can you believe this is happening? Uh, the two men in the back are looking towards his lower back slash knee area, somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I can't quite tell what's in the middle of those two places, but they seem uh, particularly fixated on that section of his body. The name of this video is, of course, What's Up My Butt Challenge, implying this one is not real. Uh, gay Twink Edition. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Twink is, of course, a effeminate homosexual man. I don't understand why we had a clarify that or why they had to put that in the title like is there any other variant of that word i mean you can definitely look at the thumbnail and assume that it's a gay twink edition because the guy does not scream uh particularly uh i i know that the other terms are uh, a bear is a overly masculine homosexual man and that an otter is a kind of in the middle why do you know this? Um, I spent too much time on Tumblr like four years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, fair enough. And the last one. Uh, the last one is cut off. Oh, it's literally the same thing. It, it's just it's more... Repeating. There's, there's a repeating trend here. There's a thing the in my butt. Was, Can you guess what it is? So the last one is basically either, is it a sex toy or an actual human penis? Oh, and you watch one of these videos. Would you like? Uh, would you mind taking us through the the contents of the advertisement and whether or not Manscaped promoted it? Uh... No, Manscaped didn't promote it. Oh, okay, it's it's a heck. It is a heck of an ad for what I assume is Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, or at least uh, what was that? The Dangerous they, Dragon. But, oh, Bad Dragon. Bad Dragon. Even even they didn't put their name on it. So whoever did, I'm sure was. Great advertising. Bad Dragon's yeah. like, we're not making a candy cane. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, but, but, but here's what, okay, Here, here's what's so funny to me, is I, I, I get it. I, I, I totally get it. There's like a weird thing where it's like, oh, how does this feel? Totally fine. But can I, I, I don't understand the, the notion that YouTube's like, that's fine. Like, what is their logic? Oh, it's a review, technically? 
All right. Is that really the uh, the 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 logic behind YouTube's uh, being okay with it? Is that it's a review? It seems very uh, that seems very strange to me. It would have to be. It would have to be right. I mean, you're not like explaining it to me that way. I could see why, as long as they're not doing anything overtly sexual, maybe why it's okay. Like, like you don't see anything. There is a there. There is a very like if you. I think it's in that thumbnail. There is like a like two by fours and like a plot between him, like his frontal thing and the rear portion of it. Because I guess so the like it would be kind of like doing a condom review. It, so I guess in theory, if we want to be metaphysical. Is theoretically, he could be literally doing nothing back. I mean, there if it could be nothing going on, and it's the world's greatest joke, which it totally could be, but I really like to bet it's not. It's probably not a joke because, um, considering that this guy makes multiple videos like this, you know, jokes town tend to be funny that much. There's a reoccurring pattern here. And the fact that one of them has 1.7 million views over a course of three years, so we're talking roughly, blah, 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 doing the math, about 500,000 views a year on average. Um, I'm willing, I'm willing to put a bet that the last few of them have been in the last couple of days because it sort of it kind of exploded. Okay. Sure, like, if you go through the comments on it, a lot of it is like, oh, this can exist on YouTube, but this can't. Like. It definitely raises the question of um, my concern is how many uh, children under 13 have viewed the video because 1.7 million, definitely a handful slipped through. Uh, Melon's in trouble. <laughs> what, who's that? Coco Melon's in trouble. I'm not sure who that is. It's uh, it's a kid's nursery rhyme right? thing that's like oh. going to pass PewDiePie in terms of subs. <laughs> Uh, didn't PewDiePie already get passed in subs? Or wasn't that the whole, uh, was it the, the Bollywood yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, the T-series. At least that makes sense. This one's just funny. I like, mean, there's, uh, always, like, there's always going to be a new king of the mountain. No, I... I and YouTube's I, just I, getting more corporate. Like, it's fine. Yeah, YouTube so badly wants to be, like, like an HBO Go. TV. And it wants to be so badly. It wants to be TV so bad. YouTube looks at how much fun TV is having and how much money it has, and then it has to get back onto the public bus and ride home. And it just thinks, man, if I just tweaked a few things, I could have a Rolls Royce. Well, I mean, didn't they for a while do like the whole like YouTube red YouTube subscription sort of thing? They did, and it, like, from what I understand, and it didn't really work. It was not a big hit. And the problem with doing any original programming with YouTubers is that YouTubers. More than any other type of celebrity seem to be embroiled in some sort of controversy every few years. Uh, you know, uh, apart from like, apart from like Rhett and Link. Sure. I mean, there's definitely the Golden Boys, but I feel like if you were to do, say, uh, the top, say, say grab like a thousand, uh, a thousand stars from television and movies, mainstream television and movies, and then compare them to a thousand stars from YouTube, I feel like the YouTube is probably going to have a larger amount of controversy uh, on each person than the TV film people, because there's probably more money involved in the first place, so people kind of mind their P's and Q's a little more. Yeah, and I mean, I think the thing with YouTube isn't so much, like, it's hard for YouTubers, to, at least like the big ones, to kind of like hide a little bit more sure whereas like i mean they're like tom cruise hasn't been seen since he yelled at people on set like have we heard anything from him since that audio leak uh well i have a feeling they probably wrapped that movie so that would that would explain that yeah which is likely but it's like you haven't heard anything since true but i mean it'd be weird if like it'd be weird if like qd pie just all of a sudden like didn't do anything besides his videos. That's true. Yeah, they're, they're probably think it's weird. YouTubers are probably way more, uh, way more exposed as people, and are probably uh, everything they do doesn't go through a publicist and an agent and a manager. Yeah, like as much as we sort of like comparing like PewDiePie to Rhett and Link, like well, Rhett and Link is like a Rhett and Link might as well be a television like. No, stars like without, that yeah i mean with their with their qualities you can clearly tell the way it's set up like and how they do things they could easily if they wanted to i mean they basically do a nighttime they do basically do a late night 
show. I could definitely imagine flipping through uh, flipping through cable like ten years ago and then seeing them on G four. Well, that's what it is. Yeah. If you like the fact that it's not networked is kind of surprising, honestly. It is insane how much quality they're able to get uh, for a complete, completely a web series. Uh, although I guess you could argue that Netflix is doing the same thing. That uh, uh, Netflix is I mean, kind of like this weird middle ground where it's technically, technically a web. Everything they do is technically a web series, but, yeah, but I think not I really either. I feel like that line is being blurred a lot, and I think YouTube is always yeah. going to be more on the amateur side, which is probably why they're never going to be able to get a premium subscription price uh, that people they, will agree with. You know, I think they probably could, but it'd be really, really hard because there's no, it's like you said, like it, it's the whole thing of like, it's YouTube, like it's your television. Why in the world are you going to try to like separate the, the amateur from it? I'm surprised like, Google doesn't just do what Apple does and have like a completely separate stream, like premium se- streaming service. That's basically its own thing where it has its own content that you can subscribe to. and It's the only place to see it. Trying to shoehorn YouTube into that just seems like a bizarre move to me. I think the actual issue... This is, I don't mean to, like, diss Susan, but I think if they had a new CEO that was more media mindset and more, like, media friendly, like, they got someone who understood media and where media is going and understood the notion of you have to separate the amateur from the professional... And if we want to put some professional behind a paywall, you could probably get away with it. But the problem is when you got someone who in there now, kind of like what we have now with YouTube, where it's some person who very much doesn't understand her own rule she sets up, doesn't understand that there's a weird divide between the amateur, the semi-pro, and the professional. And because you have that weird blend that the where you want to draw the money from, can't happen it you're too embedded in it sure too invested into what it is and as much as she is i'm sure kicking and screaming to want to jump to a netflix level yeah you're not going to be able to unless you can separate you to youtube itself from those who you're like hey would you pay to see it like are there enough guys on there that if you said we're going to make a youtube channel if you will and put it on make it a a separate application like apple tv we're gonna put our own originals on there we're gonna get these big stars and guys who like and give them a shot like like um was it video game high school i thought was really really good like there are guys who's like i don't think freddie wong's doing anything but it's like they had enough ideas where it was like you actually had a shot. You had good ideas that if you wanted to launch something with it, just get the right people who have the following that might give it a shot. But when you don't do that and all you're doing is saying, we're going to give these guys their own series, let's see what happens. Like, It's a little hard. It's hard because you're really handing over a lot of the creative reins in order to maintain that YouTube-esque, you know... Th- there's definitely like the style of YouTube of being very, uh, some of the effects are cheesy. There's like kind of like a cheesy nostalgia to it in a way. Yeah. Um, there's always going to be, there's always going to be the high school guy who wants to put up the stupid Frankie does his buddies alongside the professional who's using it for a reel. Right. Like that's always going to exist in this platform. It's just the way it is. Here's a interesting statistic I found. Uh, in ad revenue between 2017 and 2019, uh, they were able to increase about 35% per year. So they went from making about $8 billion in ad revenue in 2017 up to $15.1 billion in 2019. So this is, this is YouTube? YouTube specifically, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, that's nearly double, which is pretty impressive. Uh, Despite them basically saying we're poor and we can't put ads on everything because somebody said the F word. Yes, but whatever they are doing, if it's uh, whether it's increasing the amount of advertisements on a single video or simply getting better advertisers or be getting their algorithm better so that it's 
doing a better matching job of like who's receiving the ad so that way they're able to charge a premium for the advertisements whatever they're doing it's uh, clearly working on the back end because i mean nobody doubles their revenue no, easily yeah i mean everyone's always gonna have problems with youtube but it, unfortunately unless we all it's it's the only game in town for a, uh, the foreseeable no, future that's, that's the whole issue is you know how do you topple the monster right like, i don't know if there is one you can go to pornhub i suppose I don't think that's ever going to catch on. <laughs> I know that was a meme for a bit, but uh, may, maybe for uh, – well, now they're cracking down on things. <laughs> well, they're cracking down on things because they kind of got in the weird pickle of, of amateurism may or may not involve human trafficking. Yeah, boy, that really bums me out, doesn't it? <laughs> mean, meanwhile, all I want to see is – what are you doing, stat bro? <laughs> God. The amount of, uh, it, it's insane the amount of, uh, very bizarre content on that website. <laughs> Slightly upsetting. Uh, it really shows you the depravity of, uh, how far man can go. And hey man, rule 30, hey, rule 34 is a rule for a reason. Rule 34 is, uh, the reason that I don't click on every single, uh, link that I receive anymore. That and viruses, because I like having money yeah, in my yeah, bank yeah. account. Okay. So segueing here, I, I want to get into movie talk. All right. We can, I want to talk about our uh, some our series. But um, I want to talk Golden Globe, but I want to start off by talking about the Lola Bunny redesign because I want to know, I want to know what you think about this. Have you seen it? I have not, but I'm looking it up right now. Uh, uh, all right, Newsweek. That looks about movie. looks about the same to me. So I, I guess I should ask this question: Does is it an odd choice for a redesign, or what? Is it just is it like a I don't know a maturing of culture? Does that make sense? I think in the '90s you kind of had this wild west of animation. I definitely remember as a child seeing. Uh, it almost felt like it was a joke to over-sexualize a character. Um, Johnny Bravo is a good example of this. <laughs> yeah, so no, 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 I agree. I, I, I totally get, like, rewatching Johnny Bravo, and it's sort of like, wait, they said that? And it almost felt like a little bit of a joke on the, like, kind of a meta joke from the animators where, like, it, you know, somebody would be talking, and then a woman would be like, maybe I could help. And then they do, like, that slow pan from her knees up to her neck, and then you hear, like, the down, 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 kind of thing. And then, you yeah. know, it's definitely the humor of a bygone era, because I feel like if you played that for your average 12-year-old, they're probably going to be a little weirded out by it. It's just changing humor. Uh, I, I have not seen the Space Jam, uh, film, uh, in quite some time, in quite some time. Uh, I wouldn't be able to analyze it. Like if you, I, I, I remember the gist of the film, but if somebody said, remember the scene not, where I this, think on, I think it's on, I think it's on Netflix. I'm sure it is. Uh, I, I just don't know if I could bring myself to go. You know, there's a there's a problem with going back and watching media from when you're a child, and that's uh, it's a two pronged problem. Of one, nothing's as funny as you thought it was, and in some cases, it's straight up annoying. Uh, and two, sometimes there's problematic things that you're like, oh my god, why they <laughs> why did they do that? Uh, why? I mean, uh, Tom and Jerry has the some of the original stuff. I remember seeing it, and uh, they 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 have ki they have a lot of. Uh, a, there were definitely episodes with racial stereotypes that, even at the time, were probably not cool, uh, but definitely accepted. Uh, and now they I, they don't I, really I want to do that. I never watched it. So <laughs> you never watched Tom and Jerry? No, I was never. Uh, I I was never a Tom and Jerry fan. I'm not. This is kind of really stupid, especially from me, because you know me. I'm I I'm not a big fan of like the overly violent physical. I, in quotes, comedy, like the whole like, ha ha, he got hit in the head with a coconut sort of thing. Oh, I mean, sure. The Tom and Jerry is the lowest common denominator of humor 90% of the time. Every once in a while, they'd have a solid joke that didn't involve somebody like, getting pied, but... You know, I don't necessarily, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's never <laughs> been my thing, but I've seen clips of it, and it's just like, oh, okay, like, I, it's not for me, but I'm not 
it's definitely a show that somebody at some point went, oh, I bet I can make a cartoon to entertain kids. And what do kids yeah. like? They like punching yeah. each other in the face because the kids are awful. No, I, like, it, I think one of the weirder issues is we sort of, I don't know, I guess evolves the right word, is I don't have a problem necessarily by saying, oh, that was in poor taste. But it's weird when you're trying to erase that mistake because to me that but I mean, it's a new movie altogether. They haven't gone out and re yeah. reanimated the old film. I, I, I'm more so saying in terms of, like, in generality with media, mm -hmm. it seems like we're, we'd much rather erase the mistake than sort of just acknowledge it and say, oh, it's there, we're, we have, we're sorry if it offends you, what, you know, whatever, but we, we don't want to just remove it entirely. Like, I think there's a fine line between a healthy growth and and I don't know bending the knee to a crowd I don't know well let me ask you what do you think know. of the redesign I I personally think it looks fine I don't I don't see any I don't issue think, I, I don't know I don't I don't think it's bad like I, my biggest problem is going to be if they're able to do a good job integrating the uh, the animation into live action because I don't know if yeah. you've seen the, uh, the oh, trailer for Tom and Jerry. Oh, it's, oh it, it's it's okay. The current Tom and Jerry, uh, it looks like they did the lowest level possible. I mean, you compare it to something. I mean, I think most people could probably agree that uh, up until the recent like digital era, the best movie to do this sort of animation meets live action was uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. at the time, they went so crazy above and beyond to really integrate and make it feel like those characters lived in that world. But uh, you know what's weird is how because the so Tom and Jerry, you know, the Space Jam sequel are back to two D animation, and you haven't had two D animation in how long? Because even Sonic, which was live action and animation, that was CGI'd. And these two seem to be, you know, strictly uh, um, 2D animation. Yeah. I mean, I think it's fine. I think it's just the uh, evolution of, uh, you know, the tastes and. Uh, I mean, Tom and Jerry is a good example that I, I, I personally don't think a lot of kids are interested in this Tom and Jerry movie because nobody. The the, the 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 taste of the masses have have evolved beyond uh, just basic slapstick. Some people still like it. Yeah, but it's sort of like hard jokes. You watch anything on Cartoon Network within the last 10 years, it is not very slapstick heavy. No, it's more, at least like a little bit I've seen over the years, it's more meany. Co compared at least thing. to... Compare it at least to when we were younger. Um, yeah, we had more slapstick comedy, but now I, I know I've seen like, oh my god, what is it? Um, what's the show? Was it the one with the mixed animation with the goldfish and the cat? I don't remember if that is offhand. Mixed animation with the goldfish and the cat. It's not ringing a bell for me. Oh, what was that stupid show? Oh, we're talking about oh, the Amazing god. World of Gumball. Yeah, I thought, yeah. I, I thought it was something gumball. Like that's more internet culture and internet thingy than it oh, is. Oh, a hundred percent. What we grew up with it. What we grew up with it was like every sort of show was in its own little like, like fixated thing, and that's and and media came from that. It wasn't the other way around where it was like, where it's like like the outside influence what was seen. It, you know. I mean, a lot of the stuff we watched as kids, I mean, I, I don't know if about you, but I've definitely had the very bizarre uh, bizarre experience of watching a classic movie and suddenly realizing that I've seen this scene a million times referenced uh, in other media, yeah. uh, no, not no. understanding what the, what the reference was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of the funnier things is it, there's a compilation somebody did of, like, uh, Super Saiyan in media after like from like the late 90s early 2000s yeah and like the list just continues to grow without like that reference of it <laughs> it just wasn't it just wasn't obvious like back then but like now that it's like you have the internet it's like wait a minute, i've seen that before oh it's clearly this yes um like, there's no there's numerous shows that do this like teen titans go is literally like that where it clearly references its own media yeah uh i don't know 
I think uh, I think time it, it, change is good. We don't want to just see the same thing happening over and over again. No, no, I agree. Uh, like and things that you should just rinse wash and to be totally frank, I probably will not be watching this new Looney Tunes movie uh, because I have not watched the Looney Tunes in well over a decade. Um, again, I have a feeling this is just a lot of uh, outrage over things that really shouldn't be outrageous in the first place. <laughs> it's funny. I think there's a little bit of people behind it where it's just it, it, it's so much of like they ruined my childhood. Yes. Yeah. And it's you know, it's like there's plenty of sexy Lola Bunny. You just gotta know where to look. It almost feels like when they announced the new Looney Tunes, or sorry, specifically Space Jam, uh, it almost feels like a bunch of people were ready to read all of the new Lola Bunny uh, Rule Thirty Four comic strips that were going to surely hit the internet any day after uh, after the trailer dropped, and then to find out that she had been. Uh, not sexy. Not even desexified, but not overtly sexualized. Uh, oh, really no. feels like no, no. I wanted, I wanted to see the sexy bunny. Like, <laughs> just go watch. Just go watch. Uh, what is it? Go watch Utopia. That bunny's got something, right? From what I hear, she's got curves. But, but you know what's funny? It, and I think someone <laughs> made the joke was that that still they released of Lola Bunny. You know what the freak, the creepiest part of that entire image is? What's that? She doesn't have kneecaps. She's just got straight legs. There's no bend. You know what? I think the... Uh, There's no the, knee. The image I saw, I don't think, included that. Let me see if I can find... There's no knee. Well, it looks like she's been redesigned for the new TV show as well. Uh, okay, there's the full image. Um, there's no knee. Oh, I mean, I think that's just for the... Uh, it looks like they're going for a little more of a softer uh, animation style. It's still just weird. I was like, why doesn't she have a knee? It's a little less anthropomorphized than the original. I'm looking at a side by side. I think that's probably what it's looking like is that they haven't specifically gone out of their way to anthropomorphize her, um, which is probably the reason that people feel like something's wrong. If anything, she looks like the, uh, the, that, that, uh, cat from Animaniacs, uh, Oh yeah, with the squirrel, that. you know, like her face yeah. is really giving me that, that. It looks almost like they copy pasted that face on her. It's all as soon as I real I noticed it. It's all I can see now. Um, all right. I don't know. We'll have to see the movie. I'm sure it's going to be fine. Uh, the directors don't want to make a bad movie. I'm sure. Uh, it's fine. I, I would hope not. Uh, anybody that's mad about it is either uh, again trying to uh, make it uh, too big of a thing so that they can sell Harry's uh, razors ads. Um, or are just super horny for Lola Bunny and wanted some more spank bank material. Yeah, although I do find it funny we keep referencing we keep referencing Harry's and totally forget that for when we were you know a few years ago it was always Dollar Shave Club. That was it was awesome. Dollar Shave Club, and now it looks like it's starting to get more into Manscaped and uh, Manscaped everywhere. You know you're an adult when you stop getting ads for Nerf guns and you start getting ads for uh, keeps. Bad day. What a sad day. Yeah, it's uh I really wish that I I would I would buy some. No what sucks is I immediately I, I search I searched the Lola Bunny design and I'm already seeing like what looks like some weird uh I don't know, maybe it's not it it definitely looks like it, it's not it's not rule thirty four. But it looks like people who draw Rule 34 also. Yeah, it's one of those weird things where it's like, I have to watch the movie again to see if there's an actual difference, or if it was just, like, those, like, animations that, that are leaked. And I know someone said, like, it kind of looks like it, because, like, I don't remember her looking that detailed. I mean, I've seen but some stills from the film, and she's definitely... And it's probably a specific scene where the joke was that they were going to go out of their way to overly sexualize her. Yeah, uh, the joke is... The joke is she's the she's the attractive basketball player. Literally the uh, you know the attractive at female. Athlete. Who's gonna be our forward? Maybe I could be the forward, and then you know camera cut down now yeah. now. You know it's the, it's just a it's just a style of comedy from the nineties, and yeah, it's the it comedy the style has yeah. changed. You know. Yeah, you know it, it's the joke of she she's, I it's the nine it's always the weird thing of like it's the nineties in the general. Where it was like trying to keep the femininity, but also like the athleticism. Where it's like now, 
they I don't know. Maybe culturally it's like we want to we don't want to blend it as much. Yeah. And I mean it does look like they also redesigned her character for the updated Looney Tunes cartoon for television and it's is uh television or is that just like Apple TV? It looks like it's I mean the the animation style looks like it's meant for quick animation for okay. television. Uh, whereas the new yeah. one looks like it's meant to actually be like drawn frame by frame and not necessarily keyframed. Uh, Does that have a lot to do with like the lack of detail? Is just the way drawings are done now because they're done in a digital format as opposed to like a pencil and paper. Well, I mean, I, I don't the an the level of quality doesn't really matter. It's the uh, how quickly can we animate it? And looking at the new redesign, it looks like it's something that's probably at the very least mostly drawn on a frame by frame basis by uh in the style of old school animation whereas the uh the the one for television looks like it's probably a rig which still requires some level of uh you know it still requires a lot of um artistry and animation techniques but is really meant to kind of like you know draw out quickly using uh yeah. using the rig and the new one doesn't look like it's a rig it looks like it's actually animated by an artist frame by frame uh which is how I mean, if you ever watched, um, if you watched any TV show where then they decide to make a movie and then the animation yeah, looks like funny. way higher, it's because they straight up they have they they can afford not to take shortcuts and get better quality looking images. Yeah, I that's, mean that's just the I it, guess one of the things of it where it's like that animation. All, like you see it a lot in like and like I, what you're talking about. You see a lot when like animes do films, right? Where it where that animation quality always looks like it's sort of like it always looks softened and it always looks like it's a step down because they don't because they have to move at such a, at a weirder pace and it always like creates a weird dip in quality somewhere i mean the main thing you'll probably usually notice between a television show and then the film equivalent is that uh, on television animation they don't tend to use a lot of shadows uh, and in film, they'll usually see a lot of shadow work because the shadow work takes a lot of time. And when you're on a budget and a hard deadline, you you know you don't have the time to spend on. I mean, think of, you, you you do a 26 minutes, uh, 26 episodes at 22 minutes a pop. Uh, how much is that? 22, 22 minutes or sorry, 22 yeah minute episodes at 20. We're talking 572 minutes. Versus a film yeah. being 90 minutes, you know, you've got a lot more budget for a lot less time. So you're going to put the extra time and energy into making it look right. Versus yeah, the TV okay. show, you kind of got to crank out the, you kind of got to yeah, crank out episodes. A little quicker, yeah. Cause I know in, well, also like, this is mainly like the only experience I have with this is like animes, which are Japan. Right. And because they have like, you know, Japan anime studios are I don't want to say a dime a dozen, but it almost feels like they're a dime a dozen. Right. And you got animators like like along the way who will do this but you can always tell them it's a drop in quality because the best animators whenever they say hey we're going to launch the the next movie for Dragon Ball Z all the animators who are good the good animators aren't going to work on the, the show for that period of time though. they're going to work on the movie right. because they have to make that look good and they'll, whether it's you know 60 minute run time 70 minute run time like they have to put that effort into it they don't want they could care less about the 22 minute runtime. Right. You got to put the thing in for that one. I mean, it's not even necessarily, you know, if you're if you're putting together a movie, you want to get your best animators on it because the movie is where yeah. you make the most money over TV that's, shows. That's where, yeah, that's where the money's going to go. And when you can, and the only reason I'm using Dragon Ball as an example is because Dragon Ball, like, I think when Broly dropped it, broke off box office records in Japan. Right. I mean, I, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not super familiar with. Uh, we with uh, any anime, to be totally honest. Um, if but you ever get in, if you get in, I think you'd like the genre, but it's so hard to find one where it's just like it, it's hard to find the right one to get into. <laughs> sure, when starting out. But I mean, for you as like a film person who enjoys like the the intricacies of it and the animation of it, like there's a lot to be to be seen. But it's like it it's trying to find the right one. And also, too, when they very, a lot of them very much, I can send you some of the things, but a lot of them very much do the joke of we're over-sexualizing the women right. in the fan service, and that's always the joke, but I think they're aware of the joke, at least, 
where it's like, where it's, you know, they, they're, everyone's aware of the joke, but it's also their culture. Right. It's just always weird to put stuff like that in kids' media. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I, I should say this, like, a lot of those shows, just because they're colorful and, and pretty doesn't mean they're for kids. And that's sure. something that a lot of, a lot of times you don't, I don't, you, you don't, I want, you don't realize. Right. I mean, are there enemies that are kids for kids? Yeah, Pokemon, Digimon, prime example, those were cartoons for kids. Their relaunches are still for kids. Like, there's not, a, there's not a, there's not a giant leap there. Anything other than it's the power, it's you know, it's going collecting the mons and defeating evil. Right. And that hasn't changed in 25 years. Yeah. But like, are there animes that are clearly for like teenagers and colleges? Absolutely. There are, like, there is an anime that literally was like insanely gory. Like a guy in the first. Like I think within the first five episodes, constantly was getting stabbed, bitten, impaled. Like you're not gonna show that to a ten year old. I am. <laughs> All right, do you then? 